2020 best knockouts in the UFC. Let's talk about this, guys. Let me know in the comments what your picks, what your favorite, you know, I mean, what your favorite knockouts are, really, because uh, for this year, because we still have 20 something more days left in the year. So my favorites might change, right? I might, you know, take someone out and put them in because uh, maybe we'll see some more outstanding performances. And, you know, I'm so grateful for this year that we had MMA to watch. So <laughs> I'm really happy that I was able to watch these fights. Of course, we had some cancellations. Most recently, you know, Derek Lewis, the Black Beast versus Curtis Blades. I really wanted to see that fight. It was canceled because of everything going on. But I'm just really happy that the UFC made things happen for the fans. And, you know, just because, you know, of course, they want things to go on for their for their business, too. And for the fighters, of course. Um, so yeah, props to props to UFC for, for making everything happen this year. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. Okay, so number 10 is going to be Megan Anderson versus Norma Dumont. Wow, you see, she just drops her, hammer fists, the ref sees enough. That is a great, great fight. Norma Dumont just fought, right? She just fought... Ashley Evans Smith, she had an amazing performance, a little wardrobe malfunction, right? But she had an amazing performance, she won that fight. This fight, not so much, right? Megan Anderson, beautiful, beautiful knockout, um, knocks her down, you know, the ref sees enough. And, you know, I'm really excited to see Megan Anderson versus um, Amanda Nunes also. Okay, number nine has got to be Chaos Williams versus Alassane, right? So this fight, let's watch it. Wow. And this guy really mean mugs too. He was doing a great, great, um, like pre fight, like little stare down, just staring at him. Um, and then with that scream in the end, I mean, the guy's still unconscious on the floor. Wow. And Chaos Williams, you know, watching the fight now, he does that backflip too. This guy's someone to watch for sure. Hamza Chamaya versus Gerald Mearshard. I mean, how can you not put these two guys on the list, right? Or rather one guy, right? But it does take two guys to fight, right? Two guys to make a great fight. So uh, Gerald Mearshard, he sacrificed his face for this. Um, 17 seconds, one punch. I mean, let's watch the fight. Wow. That's, that's all she wrote. That's it. And you know, it sucks that we're not going to be able to see Leon Edwards versus Hamza Chimaev. That just got canceled. Um, really, you know, that, that was going to be his, um, his test, really, in my opinion, to really get bo like behind this hype. Um, because this fight was incredible, right? But he's still fairly new, um, in the UFC at least. So I'm really excited. If he beats Leon Edwards, if he just walks right through Leon Edwards, then I'm just like, yeah. 100% on the hype train, but for now, I'm just wanting to see what, what he has in store, um, like what's next. Okay, number seven, let's watch the fight. He just walks away like Mark Hunt style, you know? It's just like he knows. He knows he doesn't have to go in for the kill. Like, he knows. Sean O'Malley. Wow. Eddie Wineland did not... Man, look at him. He's not even getting up. He doesn't even know where he is. Just that punch. He's just like, yep, I know that that's it. That was crazy. Okay, my number six pick is Corey Anderson versus the now champ, Jan Blahovich. Jan Blahovich lost to Corey Anderson, so this was really like a redemption, a rematch. You know, he had a lot of pressure, I'm sure. Um, he knew that if he won this fight, he would probably get the title shot. John Jones was watching him. John Jones promised him the, the fight, too, after he beat Corey Anderson. So let's watch this fight, guys, because this is an amazing knockout. Wow. And that one hammer fist in the end to just say night, 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 night. Legendary Polish power. My number five pick, 20 seconds. I mean, how can you not put this guy on the list? Francis Ngannou, he shut this guy up. Rosenstruck, I mean, Rosenstruck just like, he, I'm, I'm so thankful that the ref just went in there and saved him because Man, what Francis Ngannou did to him, <laughs> so quickly too, so quickly. Um, just that flurry of just like punches, you know? Um, a couple more seconds and, you know, 
a lot more brain damage. Maybe he would have ended his career, who knows? Like that, you don't want to mess with that, you know? Um, yeah, so that definitely makes the list. Okay, number four, Dariush versus Close. Um, this fight, guys, let's watch it because this was crazy. Yeah, they were just wobbling each other too. That was just crazy. Wobbling each other, wobbling each other. I mean, both of them were just throwing bombs the whole fight. And then the mouthpiece, just, man, his mouthpiece, like, literally came out almost. Um, that was crazy. Maybe he broke his jaw, who knows, maybe he fractured it. Um, it kind of reminded me of, um, like, Luke Rockhold, what happened with him, um, how his face just, like, you know, the, the mouthpiece just kind of, like, sticks out a little bit. Um, I liked what Angela Hill said. She's like, Dariush. Dariush, Dariush is on fire. I mean, this fight was really good, so it has to make the list. Okay, number three of my favorite, most favorite knockouts of 2020 has to be Donald Cowboy Cerrone versus Conor McGregor. Let's watch this fight, guys, because the shoulder shrugs, I mean, the way he had Cowboy Cerrone just in a corner in the fetal position just covering up. He was just so fast. I'm really excited to see him fight again versus Dustin Poirier, the rematch, um, because he really got into Dustin's head, you know. I, I don't know if that's going to happen anymore. Um, I, I feel like Dustin is like a different guy. It has been like seven years. Um, it's going to be seven years when they fight, you know, it's going to be 2021 in January when they fight. And the last time they fought was in 2014. So um, obviously they're two different people, you know, seven years changes you, you know, so um, it's probably not going to get in, in Dustin's head um, as easily as he did. But let's see this fight, Cowboy Cerrone versus Conor McGregor. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. It's just crazy. He's so good. Conor McGregor is so good. Wow. <laughs> Number two. So, my favorite knockouts of the year, 2020. This is my number two um, choice. It's Cody Garbrandt. Okay, Cody Garbrandt is incredible. And he was fighting Rafael Asansau. Okay, so this fight, let's watch it. Duck, duck, boom. I mean, what more can you want right at the buzzer, too? I just love that. You know, like, the, the just the fashion in which it was, um, like, just having it be, like, right at the buzzer and the way that he just fell, like, collapsed, like an overcooked piece of broccoli just on the, you know, like, I just love it, you know? Like, you can't, what more do you want from a fight, you know? No love. Cody, no love. Garbrandt. I love the rivalry. TJ Dillashaw and him. I, I hope they fight again. You know, TJ Dillashaw and Co Cody Garbrandt. Um, I don't know. I just love their rivalry, you know? Like, even in Tough, you know? Like, they were just, they're so good. Okay, number one knockout, 2020. Joaquin Buckley versus Impa Kasaganai. Okay, this fight, right? I mean, let me know in the comments if you have this as your number one knockout. Because, I mean, I, I it, <laughs> this fight, I mean... <laughs> It was incredible, you know, so artistic, so savage. You know, you kind of need your opponent's help to kind of pull this two-touch kick off. You know, you kind of have to have your opponent hold your foot, you know, and kind of make it happen and then just spin. And, and I mean, the timing of this, this guy's super talented. It It's crazy that he still works at Walgreens. I mean, can you imagine, like, you're just in Walgreens and you're just like, that's Joaquin Buckley. Um, hey, Joaquin, do you know where the shampoo is? What aisle that's in? Oh, yeah, aisle seven. Okay, thanks. Cool kick, by the way. <laughs> you know, so like, you know, this guy, um, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I'm really excited to see him fight James Krause. I mean, their rivalry, their hostility towards each other is great. Makes for a great fight. All that beef, right? Um, the stare down is going to be crazy. All this trash talk, you know, there's, there's real hostility, you know, like, the last fight that Joaquin Buckley had, he just walked through the guy too, right? It was technically a second round finish, but, you know, the guy pretty much finished him in the first round. He got saved by the bell, really. You know, when he fights James Krause, he said that the ref isn't going to be able to save him, you know? Like, 
in this last fight that he had, he he had a lot of composure, you know, he could have went in there with a few extra shots, but he saw that the ref was coming, he saw that it was like over, so he didn't want to hurt him any further, and like, I respect that, you know, um, so, you know, he's not going to do that with James Krause, though, because it's personal. Um, it's, it's not just business anymore with that. But um, let's watch this fight, because this fight is just so good. Ow. Wow, look at that. And his eyes go in the back of his head. He's just like, where am I? <laughs> where am I? I don't want to go to school. <laughs> like, that was crazy. Yeah, so that's it guys. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this video. Let me know what your top five, top ten, or just one fight that you like, you know, the KO of the year that you think should be on this list. Or if there's any like honorable mentions, you know, anybody else that you think should be on here that uh, I didn't mention. And until the next time, thanks.